so happy for us to have yet another opportunity for us to be in the place to be together to have a very critical conversation one that i believe could be transformative for all of us and this conversation centers around the work of social and emotional learning and since the primary audience that we are working with for said conversation is an audience of parents. I want to make sure that every time when we hit live and we come on here to share with you and have this conversation, that we don't like make SEL something that's jargony. Like literally what we're talking about when we come to this space is an opportunity for us to focus on our mental health and mental well-being, and then also emotionally. Are we healthy? Are we well? Because at the end of the day, when we are in a better place, a more empowered place mentally and emotionally, guess what? We show up as parents, we show up as employees, we show up as community residents, we show up as parent champions in the school, so much more empowered to live into the best version of ourselves and do exactly what it is that I say here in this space every single week to live our best lives yes indeed ladies and gentlemen as you all are checking this what i'm saying and my the thing that i'm super obsessed about in this stage of my life is as we develop our character literally we can transform and say a transformation affords us to live a life that maybe we only imagine beforehand and it starts with us focusing on ourselves and bringing goodness bringing progress to our lived experience so as is typical with these monthly parent webinars, I first want to uh, just really celebrate some of the sponsors that make this work possible. First and foremost, the organization that I founded uh, that is certainly a critical part of this work is Clever Characters. Moving on, Together Chicago is a, another organization that I partner with here in the city and just really doing amazing work. And in fact, um, the guest that we're going to have momentarily here, uh, he and I partnered together on some projects in tandem and in collaboration with Together Chicago. And it's very important at the onset of this conversation that I raise up and I amplify Willow Creek Church, uh, particularly, the, particularly the Chicago campus. Um, Willow Creek Church is really getting behind this parent empowerment work in a massive way. Um, I don't want to say like no other church, but I mean, it's a lot of uniqueness as it pertains to how Willow Creek is showing up. Let me talk about it real quick and then I'm gonna get off of it. Like literally, I'm doing work on a monthly basis and working with some of our parent champions. Oh, I forgot to say this, for you all who are in this space, like y'all, I tell y'all every month when we come to this place, and if you're here or watching via Facebook in the Champions Village or on my personal page, I need you to comment right now. Matter of fact, I need you to share this as well. You all know how these Facebook algorithms work. The more you share it, the more Facebook is saying, oh, it must be some popping over there, the more you engage. And that's why early on in these conversations, if you're live here in the Zoom space, I need you to just say what's up, you know, holler at people as you're coming in. Y'all, I'm saying hi to you, say it back to your friend, let me know. Uh, that there's some good vibes, good energy, if you all want to say um, where you're checking in from, because I know that we have a national audience that checks into this, make sure you're putting it in the chat. If you're in a Zoom, make sure you're putting it in the chat. Facebook spaces, make sure that you put it in the chat. Holla at your friend. I'm going to tell you one more time, especially for those of you all who are watching this um, via Facebook, if you believe, like I believe, that these conversations are critical for our own personal development, critical for community impact and ultimately community change as we're focusing on developing ourselves and getting, you know, beyond having to say he didn't do it or she didn't do it or if they would do this different, nah, bro, I'm going to take the onus and responsibility upon myself to get me right, right? If y'all think that type of talk uh, could be helpful for our communities, I need you to share this right now. Make sure that you're, you all are engaging. Uh, again, thank you Together Chicago, thank you Willow Creek Church Chicago and Clever Characters for making this 
happen, making this possible. All right, that's it for my commercial break right there. I did want to take opportunity to give you all some direction as far as where this conversation is going today. I alluded to this a moment ago, but let me tell you all, ladies and gentlemen, the powerful, very capable, very intelligent, and super engaging T.O. Hardiman is here with us today. So these monthly themes that we have, and we just so, it so happened that we fell upon conflict resolution for this month's um, theme. These monthly themes that we have, I had a gentleman by the name of Jalen, who's an educator as well. He put all of these themes together. He helped us to pin the curriculum for all of our work. That stuff happened last year, right? But I'm still going to use them. I mean, he made some great content. And some of this, we've had interns to work on it as well. All that to say, we thought of these themes last year, and we're just going to continue to use them until they become antiquated. And it just so happens that the January theme that we have is conflict resolution. So I was thinking about this piece, and I was like, hey, I don't know anybody, especially people within my network, um, more powerful and more apt to speak on this topic than T.O. Hardiman. So we're going to hear from T.O. After T.O., y'all, listen, I am committed that this is going to be a get into it and get out of it. I'm going to talk about the ABCs of conflict resolution. And then you all will definitely have that opportunity to go back to your families and get ready for tomorrow. I definitely have to take opportunity every time we come into this space to raise up our parent champions that we're working with across the city and beyond. You all see the names of the champions here. I'm not going to call all of the names out and all of the schools out, but suffice it to say, this list and this group grows every single month. And I anticipate that this group and this list is going to continue to grow as more and more individuals see how we are, hear this part, remixing parent university, remixing how we can work on parent engagement by offering parent empowerment, how we can increase parent engagement by offering parent empowerment, by creating unique spaces whereby it's less of us always just talking at parents, but when parents come to our parent hangouts on a monthly basis, it's like, no, I'm not the sage on the stage. I'm just the God alongside. I come in here to facilitate conversation. So these are some of the people who show up when we have those conversations and I'm better because they show up. And I believe based on their testimonies that they have experienced some impact as well. Look at that third name, Benita Griffin. I want to talk about her for a second because when I approached her Hope Learning Academy and I said, man, who is a parent that I can work with from you all school who already is a parent champion, but some intentional empowerment, um, particularly in this space of social and emotional learning, emotional health, mental health, us having those conversations maybe can help them. And she said, the, the assistant principal was like, you know what? Our clerk <laughs> who works in the school, she's probably the most beloved person in the entire environment, right? So anyway, long and short, Benita has been working with me and she's been amazing. Benita, if you're in this place, go ahead and just say what's up to your friend. I am, yes, talking about you right now. Uh, she's been amazing. And one of the things that she would say by way of a testimony, shared testimony, is Damien, I feel like by being a part of the Parent Champions community and joining the Parent Hangouts, that I'm coming out of my shell, that I'm more empowered to use my voice. I'm more empowered to let parents know what resources are available for them. I'm more empowered to actually facilitate uh, parent trainings or be a part of parent trainings with the things that I'm learning, Damien, as I'm coming to the groups with you. What a powerful testimony. Again, it's a remix to the whole parent university model. And I believe that we are poised to allow more and more and more and more and more and more and more parents to be um, uh, able to join this platform. Suffice it to say real quick, here's another uh, real quick announcement that I have to make. And then we're going to introduce our guests for this evening. Um, we're still at a point, you all. This is the last week whereby we are offering schools the opportunity to onboard parent champions for the month of February, March, and April. What I like to say, what we're doing over the next three months is similar to that little pink spoon that you would get at Baskin Robbins. They're not going to have it post COVID, but they used to have a little pink spoon. Uh, for me, I would say, man, I just want to taste that pralines and cream. I know I'm going to buy it, but if you can give me a little bit of it before I buy it, that's what's up. Go ahead and give me a taste of it. So we're giving parents a taste February, March, and April of what we do in our parent hangout spaces. They're going to join this list of parent champions who are already listed here. 
But in addition to that, we're going to be giving these parents out of my own pocket. Do you hear me? Um, $150 stipends, right? No commitment to the schools. We just want the schools to know uh, that this is a service that we're offering. So if that piques your interest, you all have my information. Uh, email me, get in contact with me because it is going down. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, without further ado, I have the privilege, the pleasure, you all, of introducing my brother, T.O. Hardiman. Um, I call him uncle because uh, T.O. right there, um, and in a real way, he's a person that I have grown to just value as a friend, value as an individual. Um, I honor him for so many things that he does in our community. Many of you all might know him for uh, his, his push. Uh, the, his, um, I'm going to uh, mispronounce it if I try to say it that way. So he pushed to become the governor um, at one point. And uh, he'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he got a third of the state's vote. So that's powerful. That wasn't just a Chicago thing. That was across the state. People affirming that this is a powerful man, um, a, a good brother. And uh, again, just really appreciate knowing him. Nobody better than I can think of when it came to the topic of conflict resolution. Without further ado, T.O., come go ahead and join us, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Join us, sir. All right, T.O. is in the building. I, I know he's, he's here because I see his name and I anticipate that at any, there he is, there he is. Yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> So, yeah, first and foremost, like I said, it's an honor to be here with you, Brother Damien, and uh, appreciate the introduction <laughs> and all the good things there. And uh, when it comes down to this world of uh, conflict resolution, you know, I've been working in the field for quite some time now, and uh, on an intellectual level, street level, and uh, whatever, you know, whatever we have to do to get the job done, in other words. And, and as you know, conflicts do arise in the workplace, on the streets, wherever you might be in society, interpersonal conflict, gang conflict, whatever it might, just a misunderstanding, misperceptions, and all that type of, you know, all those types of conflicts that we have to address on a daily basis. And, and I truly believe that if most people would sit down for a minute and really think about what's going on with them before they approach a situation, the world would probably be a better place. Because a lot of people that I work with, all of them say one thing, they have one thing in common. They say they were not thinking at the time mm -hmm. when they made a bad decision or wanted to hurt somebody or was negative, you know, displaying negative behavior. They, they were not thinking at the time. So um, I just want to say that I'm going to back up a little bit here too. Uh, yeah, wait, 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 wait. Before you back up, brother, and please don't forget what you were going to back up into. You just said something that's so powerful. And I just want to unpack that a little bit. You said with interpersonal conflicts, conflicts on the workplace, conflicts out in the community, whatever it might be, one of the yeah. consistent themes and themes, I should say, that comes up. And I want everybody who's watching this live to hear this point. You said people said I wasn't thinking at the time. That's a that's a that's a powerful theme, man, to call out that in all of your work, T.O., in intellectual spaces and in community spaces, that that's one thing that you keep hearing. I just, it, it'd be very helpful for you to tease that out a little bit. Like, yeah. what does that process look like for me to get so enraged, so inflamed to such a point that I ain't even thinking in this moment? And when you're not thinking, I guess, what is that? We're just responding based on emotional, uh, what we're feeling emotionally, talk to it. Where's that mindset, you know, I'm a man before anything and I have to, see a lot of people are already on 10 in, the, in Chicago land and throughout the United States and some communities, 10 uh, anger scale from one to 10, that's what I'm talking about, that anger scale. So a lot of people are already on 10 because of all kinds of other you know, circumstances in their lives. And next thing you know, soon somebody might bump into you, look at you the wrong way. A misperception, misunderstanding could, could, be, could turn into a physical you know, altercation. It could actually turn into a physical altercation. Matter of fact, a blast from the past, when uh, Darian Albert was um, killed many, many, I think it was about 10 years ago at Finger High School, one of the guys that was sentenced for the, they beat the guy to death, you know, with some uh, two by fours or whatever. And uh, I hate to bring that up because it was very gruesome, you know, uh, act of violence. But one of the guys before he was sentenced to prison, he said he was not thinking. He was following the pack. He was doing what everybody else was doing. So that's what happens out here. We, a lot of people do not have a lot of good emotional uh, control of their emotions. And we're like riled up, you know, we're riled up because of what society dictates, especially 
if you're living in certain parts of the city, you have to always be on guard. At least you think you have to be on guard, okay? So what I'm getting at is that uh, it's important to be able to step back for a minute. You know, I work with brothers on the streets. I work with brothers from gangs, gang leaders, street brothers, and I work with everyday people just the same. But I'll never forget uh, this lesson that a gang leader taught me. He said, T.O., before I violate any of my soldiers, I bring them in to talk to me and I bring a witness in with them to bear witness of the fact that they may have violated some of the rules of the gang before I dish out any type of violation. Now, to me, that was profound because what it, what it said to me, not I'm not here supporting gang life, I wanna make that clear, but what it said to me that this brother had enough of a conscience to understand that people may lie, people may bring misinformation before him so what he, he would do is he would make sure he talks to the brother first instead of acting on emotions and just violating a brother that's part of his gang, in other words, okay? So every time, you know, it's, it's old saying, cooler heads prevail. Um, I was interviewing a brother from the streets the other day and he kind of like, he, he caught me off guard. He said, you know, T.O., I... He said, uh, sorry about that, everybody. I call came in here. He said, T.O., I love you, brother. Before we continue, I want you to know I love you, brother. <laughs> he threw me off, Damien, because I'm not used to no guy telling me that they love me, right? <laughs> and he knew what he was doing. I'm laughing now because it was profound for me because this is a street brother now, and he wouldn't normally talk that way. But I say, well, you need to explain to me what you're talking about. He said, And we need them people to stop calling T.O. You hear this goodness right, right now. now. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Yes, indeed. Good. So what I'm saying, you disarm people with, uh, you know, the way you respond. I'm saying this in a comical way. I was in Atlanta, Georgia one day at a gas station. Two guys were in a heated argument. They were about to fight one another. And one of the guys, I'm saying this in a comical way because I'm trying to understand it myself, but it's a real story. Uh, one guy said, man, I tell you what, man, do what you got to do. Work your jelly, man. Work your jelly. And the guy that was arguing with him, he said, you know, what did you say? Work your jelly. He said, you know what? I'm not even gonna argue with you anymore, man. I don't even know what, the, what that means, you know, talking about work your jelly, man. You done won this fight and everything. I'm about, you want, hey, you want a pop or something, man? I'm about to leave. I'm going to buy you something to drink, get you some chips, man. I'm out of here. Cause the guy threw him off with saying work your jelly. <laughs> and as funny as it sounds, it's a real story, man. And uh, I didn't know, I almost fell out my car laughing when the guy said work your jelly, but it was a heated argument. And that one little word was able to kind of like uh, turn that entire situation in, in a different direction, which was with a, a positive outcome. So, so, that's, so that, interesting. that's interesting that you tell that story because to your point, there is a lot of like, it's comical what it was that you just said. That's, that's like right. legit funny. But at the same time, what that person was doing actually is a part of what it is that I'm going to share in my few minutes uh, towards the end when I share out. That person was anticipating that if we keep going like we're going right now, chances are this ain't going to turn out right. You know what right. I mean? So to your point, he was enough in his mind. He was mindful enough in that moment to say, man, what can I? And even if, even if it was subconscious, even if he didn't really think about it, it was like, how can I diffuse this situation by doing something different than what we're doing right now? You know what I'm saying? To throw this whole thing off so that we don't continue going in the route that we're going because this thing ain't going to end well if we keep going like we're going. And that's why your brother interjected in there, I love you. And the other dude said, work your jelly. And it, was just, it just turned the whole thing around, huh? Yeah, man, it turns the whole situation around. And for a guy like me from Chicago, I'm in Atlanta. And uh, I guess that's some language they use sometimes. It just threw me off too. I say, right on, brother. Work your jelly, baby. <laughs> <Work> your jelly. <laughs> <laughs> but it diffused, it diffused the situation, man, and it was like, it was remarkable, okay? Now, just to go a little deeper with everybody, uh, on behalf of Violent, Violence Interrupters Incorporated, last year we mediated about 60 conflicts in the city of Chicago, which could have turned deadly. We stopped guys from hurting each other on the front end. So I'll tell a, a, a more serious story where, um, uh, you know, it happened like August of last year, and uh, I have some other stories a little bit more up to date as well, but this one young guy, he was working security for a gang outfit on the west side of Chicago in the K-Town area. So they gave him a gun to work security with. He took the gun and sold it for some drugs. But he forgot he told the guys where he lived at. So he lived over in the West Humble Park community. And basically the guys showed up at his house. He lived on the second floor and they were shouting his name, man, you, you better give us our money, give us the gun back. But he had sold the gun. 
And the guy that sold the gun was not a little, he was a pretty tough guy himself, but he was uh, outnumbered and outgunned, basically. So he said he's not giving them nothing. He's not going to give them the gun back. And uh, they shot his windows out up on the second floor there. And his kid was in the, uh, they didn't hit nobody, but they shot his window out to let, let him know they meant business. So um, one of the guy's friends called me. I knew the guy's father that took the gun. His father's a gang leader. And, uh, you know, there's a whole lot of phone calls that took place. I'll tell you, uh, we ended up talking to about 10 different people. And we asked them guys to give us like 24 hours or 48 hours. Let us try to resolve this conflict before you kill somebody. Because when they shot the guy's house up, he called his crazy cousins. And they they arrived over there too. So it was going to be a, a Mexican standoff, okay? So I had to go talk to that guy and let him know, man, you know, you... you My phone, uh, my phone at this time of night doesn't really ring this much. I don't know what's going on, but anyway, what happened is that um, he he uh, basically was dead wrong. He admitted it, but you know he has a drug problem. So what we came up was with an idea: let's try to raise some money to pay the guys for the gun. This is non-traditional conflict, you know, mediation on the street level. Like in Africa, they had a barter system where you can kind of you know buy your way out of a situation with some goats, ivory, and gold, and all that stuff. So this is street level, you know, uh, resolution. Um, so we raised around two hundred and fifty some dollars for the for the gun, you know, to make a long story short, and gave it to the guys. And uh, we had the guy to come out and meet the guys he took the gun from, and they worked it out. They shook hands, but they told him, "Do not come back around in that area where they were operating, because he pretty much was a traitor because of what he had had done." And then also, he wasn't no punk, like he said, "Man, you guys shot up in my house. My little three year old son was in there." He said, I was gonna kill all you guys. So this is serious street level stuff here. But the other guys weren't worried about that because they came to shoot and kill as well. So uh, to make a long story short, we mediated the conflict. As a matter of fact, the story was told in the Chicago Sun-Times. I had the guys to speak up about it uh, because whenever I tell conflict uh, mediation stories, I try to you know, have people to speak on how we work with them. So you won't just have to hear it from me. But there was a story that was written in the Chicago Sun-Times. So that was one conflict out of many conflicts that we help to uh, resolve, uh, Damon and everybody that's listening. Now, Chicago is a beast, though. Be yeah, go ahead. I'm, Before go ahead. you um, continue on, um, I need to definitely take a step back because yeah. I was intentionally brief in my introduction of you because yes. I want you to come in here and just kind of share from your own heart what it is about your organization that you would want people to know. I know yeah. that you are very engaged in so many different efforts. You're, you teach on the collegiate level. A lot of stuff, so I wanted you to introduce yourself. But before we go there, I have to raise up something that it that you just stated because it, this is just pa parents, our parents and educators. I hope that you all are taking notes of all of the amazing nuggets that are implicit in what T.O. is sharing with us. My job, T.O., is that as you're sharing those nuggets, I just want to slow the conversation down just a little bit so we can catch some of these powerful things that you're saying. The, the work your jelly piece, that's, a, that's an opportunity for us. It's a word that you use, and if you remember it, jump, uh, jump in there with the word, diffuse, yes, right. that's what you said. Diffuse the situation, revert right. to something different. If we keep going how we're going, we're gonna, some, it's not gonna end right. Those are things, parents, that we can do in our conversations and our engagement with our kids, our engagement and our places of import, uh, employment, our engagement in our communities. You see that it's not going well. Can you be the bigger person? Oh, I'm getting into those ABCs again and diffuse that situation. Powerful stuff. Another thing, T.O., that I heard when you were just sharing this most recent story was, man, sometimes when we can just meet um, critical core human needs that people have, even in addressing those needs, we have the ability once more to kind of diffuse tension or make the, the, the conflict not as heated as maybe it can be. You simply just going and raising some money, if at the end of the day, you know, that really is what you brothers are been out of shape about is some money. You are somebody who is just kind of, again, quickly thinking on your toes, you said, let's go and raise the money. Because I'm, I'm, I'm raising this up because oftentimes we get into conflicts because, I mean, it's some real stuff inside of us that's hurting. There's some real voice that maybe we have in our lives. And it's just like, I'm showing up to the world as a beast and, uh, you know, with all this pent up energy and this aggression and this anger, because I got some real stuff that needs to be dealt with. You know exactly. what I mean? Some real stuff that's going on in my life. So I say all that to say, 
that what I'm picking up from that last part that you shared is when we can find ways to get beyond what we see on the surface and start to peel back some of the layers of that onion and be like, oh, you mad because your daddy ain't there. Or, oh, you mad because y'all ain't got no milk in the refrigerator. Why are you ain't telling me that? Maybe yes. we came together and got you. You know what I'm saying? So I really appreciate that part. And I just wanted to call that out so I can make sure our parents caught that as well. So with that, bro, you might have some follow-up to that. Please jump in there if you do. Um, otherwise, yeah. I certainly wanted you to introduce yourself to the, to the group as well. Yeah, that's why I said earlier, I wanted to back up a minute before I move forward. But yeah, I'm Teal Hardman once again. I have a master's degree in inner city studies. I also serve as an adjunct professor. I teach in the fields of restorative justice, criminology, criminal justice at North Park University. I also taught at Governor State University. I'm the former director of Ceasefire Illinois, and I'm presently the executive, executive director of Violence and Interrupters Incorporated. And uh, you know, it's a long list of, you know, born and raised over there on, in the Henry Horner projects, um, west side, of, you know, near west side of Chicago. Then I also grew up in Avalon Park community on the south side as well. And uh, mainly, you know, done a whole lot of good work in the, in the city and nationwide and on an international level. Uh, most important, I ran for governor uh, twice, uh, pretty much secured close to 30% of the state vote before here in the state of Illinois. And people counted me out saying I would only receive 5% of the state vote, but you know, God counted me in, we received 30% of the state vote. And, uh, you know, and I learned they play a lot of games in politics, but I'm that brother that's uh, like no, no other. <laughs> Let me just put it like that. Educated brother, I got the streets as well. And uh, I, I was always told by a lot of intellectual brothers and sisters that, you know, once you conquer the streets and the educational level, nothing can really stop you. And I say that, but I would like to encourage all younger people, uh, don't worry about the streets. A lot of us live the street life for you. And I have nothing good to say about living the street life other than to get out of the street life. So I'm not here to honor the street life at all. I understand the concrete jungle, but that's not what him, I'm not here to honor that. I wish young men and women would just stay in school you know, and do all the good things in life. So that's a little bit more, you know, about me, uh, uh, Damon, and I just wanted to break that down, okay? Cool. So, um, again, the topic that mm -hmm. propelled us into this space tonight, T.O., is conflict resolution. And yes. I know that language that is um, more accurate with what you do or language that you, you like to use is conflict mediation. So take either one of those that you know, you want to utilize for the rest of this conversation. And I'm just going to follow your lead on that because for the sake of what we're talking about today, I'm going to think of both of those terms yeah. as synonymous, one and the same. Yeah, so anyway, um, my next question really is just, I want, and us again, taking a step back, I want you to kind of give us some, a definition to kind of ground us. When you talk about conflict resolution or conflict medi mediation, what do you mean by that? Yeah, conflict resolution is basically you're there to resolve the conflict, whatever the issue might be. And like the words are definitely synonymous to different, you know, like uh, themes or phrases like conflict mediation, but conflict resolution where you, number one, uh, the, one of the main keys to uh, resolving any conflict is not to over talk the situation and also let the two parties involved in the situation work out their, their own differences. And so you're more like a referee or a mediator. That's where the mediation comes in at. You would uh, mediate the situation, listen to both sides, do not take sides. And the more that the uh, participants talk, the better. And then you can offer some solutions. So conflict resolution is when you have uh, two parties that come together, like in the restorative justice practice, we call it victim offender reconciliation sessions, okay? Where we bring a potential victim together with the offender and we begin to resolve what it might be so that we can uh, repair any harm that was done. So with conflict resolution, the main definition is being able to work out a situation that could have turned volatile and you work it out on the front end because cooler heads prevail and you have two parties that, that are willing to listen and sit down with you momentarily. And there are do's and don'ts. See, gang mediation is a little different than conflict resolution because we're dealing with gang mediation. There's a do's and, there are do's and don'ts in that world, like never over talk the situation. I just mentioned that try your best not to take sides with either gang because the gang members will look at you like you're against them and you're for the other gang and make sure that you uh, get all the information, uh, retrieve all the information regarding the potential uh, conflict when you're out there working with these young men and women because there's always two or three different stories in the universe and it's hard to have people come in and tell you, well, look, well, I wasn't honest about this situation. So you have to make sure that you do all your research, Damien, in regards to both issues that you're gonna to bring to the table. 
because you may find out that the issues you thought it was might be a total different issue. One of my main points is this. How can most people tell a person they're jealous of one, jealous of a person? So what they do, they would bring up text, like technicalities, and start something else instead of saying, look here, man, I just don't like you. See, it's hard for a person to just say, I'm jealous of you, I don't like you. So they'll say, well, you know, you looked at his girl the wrong way. You, you know, you took some money from him, a misunderstanding. You all had words, but knowing you never had no words with anybody, but jealousy is, and envy is one of the key factors that goes into uh, having to mediate conflicts with some people out here. So um, just a uh, case in point, and I said, I'll slow it down just a little bit for you. Um, I had a situation, so no one's going to be able to tell anybody that's listening tonight yeah. the kind of stories that I'm going to tell you. These are right from the streets of Chicago, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I had a situation, a guy got beat up at a lounge. The guy swole his face up real bad. And uh, two twin brothers were present, and the two twin brothers was allegedly the guy's friend that got beat up. But the guy that got beat up started a fight with some guys he did not know. But what happened after he got beat up and he was laying on his back, the two twin brothers took a picture of his swollen up face and they posted them pictures all over social media. Now, the guy that got beat up was not a punk. He just got beat up by two or three different guys, two or three guys. And so he knew where the twins lived at. And he, uh, he went over there to their house and he shot their front window out, front, shot the front window out. The two twins lived with their grandmother who was in a wheelchair. She fell out of a wheelchair. Nobody got hit. No, fortunately, nobody got hit. But he, he let them know that he meant business and he was going to kill them two twins. One of the neighbors called me because they know about the work we do. And uh, basically, um, they gave us the name, the name of the young guy. They even called the police, but the police uh, couldn't catch up with them. Uh, the guys on the streets provided us with the whereabouts of the young guy. And uh, we went over there to talk to him and, and true, to, true to form. The young guy told me, say, man, I'm not going to listen to nobody. These are 18, 19 year olds, okay? He said, I don't care if you go get Jesus Christ. I'm killing them guys. That's how he said it. I'm being honest with you. And I said, wow, we got to do some real research. We didn't uh, give up on the guy, so we had to put on our thinking caps and find somebody he would listen to. This guy wouldn't listen to me, but I knew what gang he came from, so I went out there and uh, I put some antennas up in the community, and I found the gang leader that he would listen to. I'm talking about another guy that was the, the prince of the organization that he came from, like a guy that's like a... Uh, you know, like he's the main man, so to speak, even though he's a little older, but all of the guys respect this guy. So I went over there to talk to him. And in the meantime, the guy that shot the windows out, he came back over to the grandmother's house and burnt her van up on the side of the house to show you that he meant business. Around four in the morning, he burnt the car up trying to lure them to come outside. So the twins were terrified, of course. They were very terrified. So when I got the prince of that particular street gang to come see that brother, we knocked on his door about two or three of us, and uh, the guy opened the door because his mother was there, and he said, man, what's going on? He didn't even know the prince, <laughs> you know? He came from the organization. He didn't know who this guy was that was with us, and he kind of kind of got tough with me and said, man, why y'all coming back to my house? I told you I wasn't going to listen to nobody. I burned up the van this, you know, this morning, early this morning. I said, you know what, man? My man right here want to talk to you. And when the guy talked to him and told him who he was, I kid you not, the young guy thought he saw a ghost. And uh, he gave up his gun, and we didn't ask for his gun. He gave it to us. He said, man, take this gun, man. He said, I'm through with this conflict, man. You know what? Let me just beat them guys up. He said, let me fight both of them together. He said that. And my man told him, he said, no, you're not going to do anything. You done burnt the lady's van up. You done spooked the grandmother. You not really shot them guys without shooting them because they're terrified. I'm asking you as my man, as one of the brothers to let it go, man. And um I kid you, right on location, the young guy, let it go, because it's all about your networks and the people you know on the streets of Chicago, and that's how we were able to save those two lives on the front end, because this young guy really did not care. Uh, and when I do street work, everybody, I don't really mention a lot of names, the gang names all the time. My main concern, what can we do to stop the killing on the front end? So this is deeper work here, what I'm talking about now. This is the nitty gritty. And the reason I don't mention names and gang names, I know most of the people anyway, but I don't want nobody to come back to me later, say, well, my man mentioned your name and all the misperceptions and misunderstandings out there and mentioning gang names, because a lot of the conflicts are not gang related per se. It's like interpersonal conflict, like what happened to the guy at the lounge, okay? So therefore, it keeps me in a safety zone because if somebody runs up on me and say, man, I heard you was in our gang business. No, sir, I was not in your gang business, man. 
Now, who told you that, you know? Go get the person that told you that. See, this is the way we have to work out here. I'm just being honest with everybody that's listening. I don't want to be too graphic, Brother Damien, but I'm just giving you the nitty-gritty, concrete jungle stories out there. And I have about yeah. 100 mediations in my head. I'm serious business. 100 mediations over the last 10 years that God allowed me to mediate and save lives on the front end. So uh, that's part of the work that we do. But after we mediate the conflict, then we see what else the brothers may need to do in their lives. So we try to help them on their road to becoming a productive member of society. Uh, they may have to re-enroll in school, secure a job, mental health services, social services, drug counseling services. Uh, we just help people out. You know, we just recently, uh, Damon sent one of the young brothers to a ranch out there in uh, Elizabeth, Illinois. And he comes out of off the west side of Chicago, he's one of them shooters. He was out at the ranch with his girl and his friends. He said it was like supernatural for him. He had never been to a ranch where he could see the stars at night and just relax his mind for two or three days. So we actually follow up with everybody as well because it's more than just mediating the conflict in that moment because the brothers still had to live in that neighborhood, okay? And, uh, and But we work with over 1,200 high-risk young people and we kind of, we uh, monitor all the work we do as far as what we do with them. So I, just, I don't want to over-talk it, but I just want to break down a few processes in this field of work okay yeah let me jump in there to you for a moment yeah. because again implicit in what it is that you're saying is just so much good stuff and knowing that the audience that shows up here on a monthly basis is primarily parents and educators yeah. i just want to make sure that they understand that everything you're saying has value for them as they are trying to navigate their own concrete jungle you hear yeah. me like yes, concrete jungle ain't just the, the the communities, the neighborhoods. The concrete jungle for some of us may be your own house, our own homes. Concrete jungle may be, you know what I'm saying? When I open up the door to go into my house, I know it's about to go down because tension is high. Everybody, you know, frustrated with everybody else. And even generationally, <laughs> we were kind of reared in an environment that this is what we do, right? So there's conflict after conflict, tension upon tension. So I just really hope that in you sharing your stories, people are able to say, yo, everything Tio is saying right now has the ability to be real to life for me as I'm trying to navigate my own situation. A powerful thing based on one of the last stories that you share is that the, the word that comes to mind, let me say the word and then I'm gonna get into it, influence, 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 influence. I told y'all I love and I need the engagement. So if everybody on Facebook, I see the Facebook popping off, I'm here live, if y'all can write that word, influence, 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 influence. Because T.O., you said nobody else can reach that brother. He's like, why are you at my door again? You light skin, he probably, he probably said some stuff that you don't wanna say here in this space. He probably right. went in on my boy, T.O. Yeah, Why y'all come back to my house? I already told you I don't want nothing to do with you. However, yeah. there was somebody that he didn't even know, but he knew the name and he knew the position. And right. that was somebody of influence that was able to tap into that, bro. Right? So yes, I just yes. think that I'm not going to develop it that much because it ain't even fully developed in my mind. But those hard-to-reach situations, hard-to-reach situations in our schools, hard to reach situations in our homes, hard to reach situations even inside of our own selves. I think one thing that we can start asking ourselves, who has a position of influence or what has a level of influence that if I can leverage this person or leverage this thing, maybe I'll be able to tap into this and, and, and to my son or, or my daughter in a way that I wasn't able to before. That word influence, influence. We're so quick oftentimes to give up when it gets hard. I love, man, Tio tells me some of these stories when we go and we do outreach in the community and it's all, my, my jaw isn't physically or literally dropped, but it's almost like, yo, for real, Tio, you did that? You stuck in there with that? After they did all of that, you still was standing right there? Yeah. And it's just, yes, because he's a brother who stands by other people who are in tough situations, even when they're posturing in a way that makes it hard for him to stand by them. And I think that's a real word for our parents. And he's constantly thinking quick on his toes, like, 
yo, how can I leverage a person or something that is influential to this young person that could get them to see the situation differently, that can get them to open up, that can get them to stop, you know, with all of this exterior frustration and all of this hardcore that I can't penetrate and that influence, right? That thing that I'm leveraging that has influence, I can use this as a tool to tap into this young person. That was so powerful. I'm thankful for everybody who um, hit that word down there um, in the comments here in Zoom and also on Facebook. I think they were something very powerful to you with that story that you shared. I know you got a lot more, but I got to call back some other stuff. And I told all the stories. We're good. I only want to tell you. <laughs> that's all you need for now. You know, that's it. Cool. So you gave us a framework as well for conflict resolution and mediation that I think said framework can be helpful for us to really take note of as well. Um, first of all, before you gave us the framework, you hit us with, and I quote, cooler heads prevail. So, yes. uh, and again, that's going to come up in the ABCs of conflict resolution in a moment. Cooler heads prevail. If I could just take a moment and not be as heated and frustrated and cool down a little bit, you feel me? Um, then maybe we can get some prevailing to take place in this situation. Yes. Uh, never over talk the situation. Too many people want their opinions to be heard. They don't want to hear nobody else. Come on, parents, let's be real. So often are we giving space and opportunity to be listeners and not just perpetrators of comment. You need to do this. You need to do that. You ain't that. Your daddy was, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying that that's you, but in often, oftentimes in situations, we're doing too much talking and not enough listening. Yeah. That's a great first point for your framework. Number two, you said don't take sides. So it's not just about my opinion. It's not just about, you know, your opinion. Like, let's try to make sure that we're both heard in this situation. And sometimes it shouldn't even take all of this, but maybe you need to put a timer on your phone and say, you get a hundred, you get a minute and 30 seconds, you get 90 seconds to share your perspective. Okay, your time is up. Now I get 90 seconds. Okay, my time is up. Because that I think, T.O., to some extent, I'm thinking about how do we take your framework and apply this in our homes? Like, it's not just about my opinion prevailing or your opinion prevailing. We're equally wanting to have an opportunity to express what's on our hearts and minds. And then I love that third point. Your whole thing is, let's try to retrieve the information versus allowing my mind to think something that might not even be true. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like you did this because you got your own thing going on. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, usually you will wash the dishes. Usually you would have took the garbage out. Why didn't you do it? You understand? Like, we're just like allowing ourselves what Brene Brown um, calls, we're allowing ourselves to think up all of these alternative narratives. And sometimes to your point, cooler heads prevail. And we can just calm down for a second, take the tension all out of our neck and our shoulders and just approach right. people with a conversational tone. That can be just such a powerful asset to alleviate some conflicts. Let me ask you uh, this last question, T.O. Um, yes. Then we're just about out of here for the evening, brother. Thank okay. you so much for your time. Um, just the fact that we were able to sustain such an engaged and active audience lets me know that the community was very much benefited by what it was that you shared today. Um, and most of it was just you sharing your life and sharing stories. I already know that you're the king of storytelling, so I already knew how it was right. going to go down, so that's amazing. Yes, um, it is. Talk, talk to us, T.O., about what skills uniquely that you possess that allows you to be good when it comes to conflict mediation and conflict resolution. And let me tell you why I'm asking you this question before you get into it. Mm -hmm. My job and my task every month when I show up is to help our parents and our educators maybe learn of new things and or just kind of uh, get reminded of certain things that they already know. That when you apply these things in your own life, guess what? You are empowered and better resourced to live your best lives. Like literally, there's simple life tweaks and life hacks that we can implement into our lived situation that allows us to get an upgrade in every situation of our life. So talk to us, T.O., about like what special skill set that you believe you possess or that you've been blessed with that allows you to be good and very skilled at conflict mediation. Yeah, first and also, I want to just uh, salute all the teachers and uh, the, the staff at the schools because I know they have a heavy load on their shoulders when it comes. I've worked in schools before, so I know how it goes. 
one one guy mess up the entire classroom can mess you know one guy acting up in class can mess it up for the entire classroom so i salute the teachers out there plus i understand the principal's role and the teach everybody i just want to say that also now as far as the skills that god you know uh, blessed me with uh i've been a uh my birthday is september 21st i was born on the international day of peace when they recognize the international day of peace so blessed are the peacemakers but uh God blessed me with the discernment, the ability to read people pretty good. I grew up in the heart of the ghetto, and I know just about every personality trait from psychopaths to sociopaths to guys that won't harm a fly. You know, I know everybody in the community, the different relationship scenarios, educated scenarios. I've, you know, I've traveled the world. I've traveled to 40 states in the United States. I've traveled to the UK, Africa. Uh, God has blessed me to get around, you know, uh, and I'm grateful, but uh, yeah, uh, reading situations is, is uh, I'm pretty keen when it comes down to uh, reading a situation and what's on people's minds. And God blessed me with the ability to go further than most people would go. And number, you know, this might even sound comical. When I say go where most people uh, are afraid to go, is asking somebody straight up, excuse my language, everybody, what the hell is on your mind, brother, right? <laughs> what is on your mind? Why are you looking at me like that, man? We supposed to be able to address these issues, talk about the issues, whether you're male or female, Let's deal with this and then present uh, truths that nobody wants to address at that time. That's not easy. Trust me, it's not easy because when you're mediating a conflict and uh, somebody told you something, they don't want you to share it. But when you share it, it's going to help heal the situation. But you expose somebody at the same time. That's not easy, bro. This work is not for the faint at heart. Do not try it at home. If you're not cut out for this, just let people like me take care of this here, you know. But God, but no, I'll drive aside, but God gave me a, the ability to intercept whispers and work with my people on a higher level. And I'm so grateful uh, because, uh, you know, I've had some failures. Don't get see, we all talk about the successes. I had a guy that told me he had put me to sleep for meddling in his business before. And, um, you know, he said it twice, you know, and, uh, and and I looked at him, you know, see the hands are faster than the eyes on the streets, everybody. You know, you ended up getting shot, you don't even see it coming. But the reality, he told me he would put me to sleep and uh, I had to cross my heart as I tell this. I'm not even going to tell the story, but I'm still here today. He didn't put me to sleep. But it was a tough situation because I was saving a young guy's life. He wanted to kill the guy. He thought I was in his business. But I'm letting him know I'm not in your business like that, bro. I don't even know your name. I'm not going to tell you all the way I talked to him because I started cussing everything to get out of that situation. I say, hey, man, I tell him to make himself look like a gorilla in the situation, right? And he say, man, uh, whatever, you know, whatever. That's how we left it, whatever. But we saved the guy's life. And the same guy that told me he would put me to sleep, I saw him two months later. I was driving through a McDonald's drive through Somebody was blowing their horn at me. He said, how you doing, big brother? He put his fist up in a big black power salute. My man. And that was his way of apologizing to me. <laughs> we know without apologizing, right? <laughs> so the point I'm making to you all, if you're not able to read them, God bless me with, with the ability to read situations. And in that situation, in retrospect, I shouldn't have walked into that situation because it was a pretty tough situation. I probably should have brought somebody with me there, uh, even though I got out of the situation unscathed. You know, I, everything worked out okay, uh, Damon. Perfect, perfect. Well, T.O., brother, this has been an amazing time of sharing with you, uh, hearing your story, bro. And uh, like you said, I'm sure there's hundreds of other stories. Uh, yeah. But in the interest of time, uh, definitely, bro, we have to transition. I don't want to. Okay. Uh, but for the time being, we will. Uh, but before we get out of here or before you uh, leave for the evening, T.O., um, let people know how they can get in contact with you. If their interest was piqued and, and if yeah. they're intrigued uh, and want to converse further, how can they get in contact with you? Yeah, visit my website, uh, violenceinterrupters.org. That's uh, violenceinterrupters.org. I'm on all the social media channels, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. You can always reach me at T.O., T.I.O., Hardiman, H-A-R-D-I-M-A-N, D-I-M-A-N. Just reach out to me. And if you want to talk to me, uh, give me a call, 773-391-9072. Just reach out to me, okay? Yeah, T.O., don't you have a, a weekly show as well? Yeah, I'm on WVON radio every Sunday morning from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. I have a pretty big listening audience now, about 44,000 people. All praise is due to God. And we're doing quite well on social media also. And uh, so, yeah, we, we're taking care of the business out here, Damien. God, God is moving me, just put it like that, on a lot of different levels right now. Yes, sir. Well, Tio, like I said, thank you so much, sir, for your willingness to be here today. Um, and I'm sure, brother, that you and I will be in touch, all right? Appreciate you. All right, have a good one, okay? Okay, no problem. 
Yes, sir. All right, everybody, uh, as far as our parents who are watching this live and then also the people who are in Facebook, um, I definitely want to mention our first giveaway for tonight. You see T.O. Story dot, dot, dot. So from T.O. Story, and um, I guess for tonight, y'all just go ahead and email me the answer. And the first person who, how am I going to, yeah, the first person who emails me the correct answer, because obviously my emails will be time stamped, um, then I will certainly just follow up and let you know if you want your $15 Grubhub gift card or if you want a 30 minute adult SEL session for us to do a deeper dive into the type of stuff that we're talking about here and the things that we share in our parent champions networks. Here is the story, or excuse me, the question that I'm gonna ask. And I'm only gonna ask it once because we have a few more things that we have to cover before seven o'clock. And I called it out a couple of times, you all, as Tio was sharing his story. Tio gave three points that are a part, and you don't have to be perfect with the language. If you're close enough, when you send me that email, I'll respond with the giveaway. And I might, uh, you know, depending on how I feel, give out um, multiple Grubhub gift cards based on the responses. And by the way, the, the reason I'm having people email this to me this time is because when I don't have your email, sometimes I can't follow up with the people who won. So if it's already in my inbox, it just becomes a little simpler. Here's the question. When T.O. gave his framework for conflict resolution, he gave us three components of the framework. He told us there are three parts that he always thinks of and he has in the back of his mind when he's approaching a situation whereby he has been tasked to mediate a conflict. When T.O. has to mediate a conflict, what is his framework? What are the three components of T.O.'s conflict resolution framework? I told y'all I was going to get at it very quickly and leave it because I have to get to the ABCs of conflict resolution. I'm about to just blitz through this. A, ABCs of conflict resolution. A, anticipate, okay? Everything that I'm about to say right now is just us reinforcing some of the things that were already highlighted when we talked to T.O. A, anticipate. If you can already anticipate that this is going to be a tense situation, that there potentially might be some conflict that will brew when I walk into this space, why don't you do the necessary work on the front end to get yourself right, right? To start to diffuse that situation even before you walk into it. So strategies that we talk about often here include mindfulness. Another strategy that we often mention up is affirmations. If I know when I walk into this space, they might already be bent out of shape. Can I be an affirming individual, right? And even try to point out positivity to try to diffuse that situation even before it starts. And I know so many people here in this space is like, Damien, it shouldn't take all that. It should, listen, one of the things that I talk about in my very powerful and transformative character activation wheel training that I offer up for parents is the fact that if you wanna make an investment into your, your life that's gonna help you to develop character in the way that we always talk about, one of the investments that you have to make is to have a nurturing community. But what I'm wise enough to know is that sometimes it's not that easy for us to serve people an eviction notice and to tell them, poof, be gone out of my space and out of my life. Sometimes based on especially family dynamics and family situations, you're stuck in that environment, right? So if you're going to be stuck there and if you can't shift and move pieces around like it's a puzzle, but no, this is the lot that you've been offered and the hand that you've been given. Now, when it comes to abuse, I'm always going to tell people, don't ever sit in the seat of abuse. Get immediate help. Have an effective immediate intervention to the extent possible. But beyond that, man, many of us are in tough situations. And we're in situations whereby there might be a lot of conflict. And again, the A of conflict resolution says, if you can anticipate that maybe right now, this might be a situation that might be heated, might be a situation that might make me mad or turn like, how can I start doing the mindfulness stuff on the front end? How can I go into this as an affirming individual? And now this helps us to slide into the B of the ABCs of conflict resolution. Y'all, listen, how can I be bigger? How can I be bigger? In so many situations, and we heard this in the stories that Tio said, we would not have the 
violence that we have. We would not have the shootings that we have. We would not have the deaths that we have. You would not have the vitriol in your home or in my home that we often have. If somebody could resolve, and I hope that some people who are watching this will resolve right now to say that I'm going to be bigger. And I know some of you all already saw the ABCs of conflict resolution, but I got to repeat this right now because so many of my parents weren't able to catch that. The B of conflict resolution says that I'm going to commit to being bigger, being a bigger person, being the bigger individual in this situation, saying that, okay, uh, you know what? You on crazy right now. And I could tell you all about yourself, tell you about your mom and them. Like I could tell you off real nicely right now, but I'm not going to do that because I resolved in this season of my life in 2021, after I had a hellacious 2020, that I'm going to be bigger because I don't I only have so much space in my emotional cup to deal with Cray. So since I know that I only have a limited capacity to deal with that situation, I'm going to, in being bigger, diffuse this thing before it even gets to that point. And dealing with the ABCs of conflict resolution, you all, the C is to calm down, calm. Listen, even as I'm saying that, y'all, typically when I get into a mindfulness moment, uh-oh, my light wanted to attack me. Typically when I get into a mindfulness moment, you all, I close my eyes because me closing my eyes is one of the actions that I've taught myself, even without thinking about it, puts me into a more calm space. Because think about it, when you close your eyes, it's like, I'm shutting off y'all, I'm shutting off wifey, I'm shutting off daughter, I'm shutting off my dog upstairs. And that moment, but even for that split second, Damien is just about you giving yourself what you need in this moment to relax and or sometimes I need to be stimulated, I need to be motivated, I need to be encouraged, right? So calm down, y'all. Come on, y'all. Sometimes we take some of this stuff way too seriously. And us taking it so seriously puts us in a place whereby we are not afforded to be our best selves. The ABCs of conflict resolution. And y'all know me. I hope y'all typing these things in. I know some of y'all heard it, but y'all know the illustration that I use of the church quite often is such. Whereas when I go to church Sunday in and Sunday out, you better believe some of those sermons some of those, those scriptures, I already heard those. Some of those scriptures I go to sleep on when I'm getting in bed and I turn on um, my Bible Gateway app. But guess what? Even the ones that I hear every night, it still helps me when the pastor and the preacher repeats those because my flesh is weak, right? And I get into a place whereby this is a timely reminder because even though I just heard it last night, I need to be reminded again. And especially when stuff popping off in my life that's irritating me, that's getting me to a place like Tio said, whereas I ain't even thinking right now. I'm not in a cognitive place. I'm 100% in a very enraged and then impassioned emotion state. Come on, y'all. Like in that place, chances are I'm not going to do things that are in the best interest of even myself, definitely not in the best interest of other people. So um, I am very keen to make sure that when you all show up here, that you are leaving with some strategies and some things that really you can go and apply right now today everybody can uh, can anticipate that when i'm in certain situations man maybe uh yo like I, I know that it's about to go down so let me go into this space and and uh as the best version of me uh so i don't go off and i don't pop off so we can anticipate b we can be bigger and c we can calm ourselves all the way down uh, so that we can be in a more healthy emotional place and make decisions that are more rational. I think I got another giveaway. Oh, snap. Y'all, what is the C of conflict resolution? First person that emails me, the C of conflict resolution, $15 Grubhub gift card, or you get access to a 30-minute adult SEL session. Before I get out of here for this night, I want to celebrate and amplify once more. Um, our parent champions from literally across the nation, mostly here in Chicago. A lot of the parent champions, um, I see you all in this space. I want to keep pushing you to make sure that you're sharing this with other parents in your schools. I literally created this space and this opportunity because our parent champion said, Damien, we want other parents in the school to be able to hear directly from you as well. And what I told them is only one contingency. If y'all bring the parents that are here from me, I want to make sure that I'm taking adequate time to raise you up and amplify you as a person in the community that can be a value add to those parents. 
All right, y'all. So listen, we are about to get all the way out of here for this evening. I am so appreciative for those of you all who stuck around, for those of you all who engaged. It means the world to me. Make sure that you all are taking advantage of this once I'm going to say once in a lifetime, but I can't imagine doing this again. I'm literally giving away money out of my own pocket to train more parents. If you want to know more about that, I already gave you all my email. Hit me up. Uh, and with that, y'all, I am out of here. Just like y'all said, hello on the way in. Say goodbye to your boys. Say goodbye to the community on your way out. Y'all, this has been another month of our parent social and emotional learning webinar. Conflict resolution was our topic for this month because conflict resolution has been our theme in the schools for this month. I hope this was helpful. I hope you all appreciated all of that. And until next time, peace out, peace out, peace out, peace out. Thank y'all for commenting as y'all are leaving. I'm seeing the, the hands. I'm seeing the comments. Do the same thing in Facebook. Peace out, everybody. Peace out. Thank y'all.